All right, it's the Super Syntex Podcast with DJ Ramirez and Chad Conine. Good morning. Morning. Howdy. DJ, Howdy. you there? Come on now. She's... Well, sorry, I'm trying to... I did not get any sleep, okay? Gotcha. Looks like you got Christmas lights or something in the background. No, just regular curtain lights. Okay, gotcha. It's too uh, early for Christmas lights. I agree with that, although my daughter would disagree. Elf was on Saturday night on TBS. All right, it's, it's wait till after Thanksgiving. Come on. The only acceptable Christmas stuff before December are ha- Hallmark Christmas movies because those run all year long. <laughs> <laughs> well played. <laughs> Um, high school well, football. Yes, yeah, so let's talk high school football. <laughs> and so we were stumping for them uh, for a while now. Um, but Greg Tepper and the gang, they finally did uh, listen to us and um, put La Vega into the state poll at number 10 this week. So obviously there are is some pretty stout competition in class 4a division two around the state i think carthage is number one um you got teams like west orange stark and belleville in la vega's region that are ranked higher than the pirates but we've we've mentioned that uh they're capable what does a path to jerry world look like for la vega you know um without breaking down the bracket uh, too much and without and I, I'm sure it, if somebody was really got into the into the nitty gritty of it they could probably figure out what the bracket was going to look like at this point or or a lot of it right but honestly like something that Don Hyde said to me after the China Spring game really rings true with this question about their path because he said I don't care if it's Carthage or West Orange Stark or Salina or who we're playing, because, I mean, they played two of those three teams, right? But anyway, the point is, he said, I don't care about the who, I care about the how. And he was talking about how his team plays, right? Mm -hmm. And um, it was a a good line, and it rings true. Um, So, you know, if La Vega keeps playing better, if if their big old offensive line can get a little bit meaner and nastier, and that's the thing about offensive line play – is you got to be super aggressive, but you also got to do things like not jump, you know, not have pre-snap stuff, right? So, uh, so there's a, there's an art to playing offensive line, right? To doing yeah. things on time, but also to be like kind of a little bit um, mean and nasty and and a little bit crazy, I guess. Anyway, uh, so if they can kind of find that fine line and be really aggressive up front on offense. Uh, and because if they can run the ball, they're really scary because they can throw the ball pretty well too. Yeah. Uh, you know, DJ, you've seen them, um, at least a couple times. Right. Um, and I think you've seen them win games different ways, like with the running game and with the passing game. Uh, I mean, you know, what do you think it takes for La Vega to, to get there? Um, I mean, I, I feel like I agree with Chad in that they are going to have to play a little bit meaner. Mm. Um, you know, in the in the Gatesville game, which was where they had to lean more on the passing game, um, you know, they I feel like if the O-line had been a little bit tougher in that game, a little bit more aggressive up front, they probably wouldn't have been... Um, Quite as close. It, yeah, quite as close. Um, and and even at the end, they they were able to take off a little bit because they they were a little bit tougher. Mm. Um, and obviously, Gatesville wasn't as uh, coordinated and as well put together in their passing game. So, um, and then obviously when they played Robinson, I mean, we thought that was going to be a lot closer than it was. Uh, but they kind of really put everything together in that game. So if they played the way that they played in those games and continue to get better. I do agree with Chad. Um, It's hard to beat the same team twice. So if they end up facing up against like a West orange Stark again, like they might have an advantage there. Yeah. They'll have an advantage. they will be a different team this time around in the playoffs. Um, And who knows, we might end up if, 
if Robinson gets, you know, all of their pieces together and starts, you know, playing a little bit more like the Robinson that played against Glenn Rose uh, and, you know, some of these other teams um, that they beat really well and really convincingly, then we could also have a District 12 rematch later mm -hmm. on. So, um, mm -hmm. I you think mentioned that Robinson game. Uh, that was the game after when I talked to Don Hyde, Hyde and he said he doesn't care about who he cares about how, you know, yeah. and he had really gotten after his team, which I'll mention later in the podcast as well. But um, yeah, I mean, I think he got their attention with that. Yeah, no, the O-line was spectacular against Robinson. Mm -hmm. And in, I, I don't think Bryson Rowland has the game that he has without them, but also Bryson Rowland is just a scrappy, you know, you can't, you have to learn how to tackle well if you're going to play against that kid <laughs> because he will he will miss two or three like the first guy is never going to be the one to get him so um and then obviously like you know defensively they're also really solid they have a lot of really good safeties um and a lot of really good like d linemen Warren Richardson was incredible against Robinson. He was the one getting to the quarterback the majority of the time. So you got guys like him, you got guys like Amir Gibson, uh, and uh, you know, uh Antoine Good and you know, in the secondary, who are veterans and experienced and you know, they they've they've got all the pieces. If they put them all together, they're gonna be and uh, don't get me started, special teams. They have a really consistent kicker. Mm. Like he's one of the most consistent kickers that you're going to see um, out of this 4A group in our area. So um, like he punts really well. He kicks really well on, you know, field goals and extra points. So, um, I mean, the Pirates are kind of got the recipe for success and they just kind of think I kind of think DJ is a connoisseur of kickers a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like, quite a few. He likes soccer. Uh, so, um, you know, you mentioned special teams. The last time La Vega won state um, in the state game, Dante Stewart took a kickback for a touchdown in, in the state game. Uh, obviously, special teams can be huge. Um, you know, we know that to, to flip a game in your direction. You mentioned Warren Richardson. Uh in terms of the totals I've seen, he may be our best pass rusher in the area. I think he's got about seven or eight sacks uh, at this point. So, yeah, I mean, uh, it's going to be fun to, to see how far La Vega can go. Um, so, if it's week 11, that means we've got games with playoff implications for sure. Uh, we've even got a play-in game between West and Whitney that Chad will be at. So let's dig deeper into that matchup. <clears throat> um, Longtime rivals there. Uh, always, always a fun matchup when West and Whitney get together. They're not that far apart. Who do you guys like in that game? And then um, we've talked consistently about just how competitive, how tough this district is. How far can the winner go even as a fourth place team? Oh. DJ, I'll let you have first crack at this one. <laughs> Obviously, I just saw West this past week. I mean, we all know they have a fantastic defense year in and year out, but I feel like they really do have probably the best defense in this group. Um, and like we said, they're really, really tough. Mm. If they don't make mistakes and they bear down when they need to bear down, they're hard to beat. Um, and their defense really is what's keeping them in games because offensively they're still pretty young um, and they're missing, you know, they don't have their veteran running uh, back for the rest of the season and uh, or, or the, their other veteran running because um, Aiden right out was also out. So Aiden York was the one to step in and he's a senior and he did really well against Grandview. Um, you know, he's been, picking up where Koi Flish left off. Um, but, you know, like they, they need to capitalize on their opportunities. A lot of the games that they've come short in is just because like they've gotten into the red zone or they've gotten close and just have not been able to put it together. I mean, they were 
literally three, two yards away from a touchdown the other night and uh, ended up going for a field goal that missed. Um, so, I mean, th those are just some things to, you know, take care of. Obviously, you know, some penalties that were avoidable, I think, in that Grandview game. Um, and then Whitney, they have obviously been really tough. They've been in game. They've come back from deficits in district play. Um, I don't think that we can write them off, but they've also just been a little inconsistent. And ever since Jonte Johnson went down, it's kind of like they haven't had that spark. Um, I feel like Grossbeck had a, just ha has had no luck in this district. <laughs> and mm. um, so it I mean, Whitney obviously played the better game against them, um, but they're going to be West. Everything is going to have to go perfect for them. So this matchup isn't like the most exciting thing you've ever seen. You know, it's not like a district championship or ranked teams on the line. But in a way, this matchup is what week 11 is all about. You know, mm -hmm, the, mm -hmm. your regular season comes to a finish. You win, you're in the playoffs, and you can feel good about the season. And you're going out there, and you're trying to find 11 guys on offense and 11 guys on defense that can play because your team has had injuries. It's been that kind of year. It's been ups and downs. But you go you go play a rival on the last week of the regular season, and the winner goes to the playoffs. And that's, that's uh, kind of beautiful, kind of a beautiful end of the season. And I don't know. I mean, you asked how far they can go. Well, they're, the, their opponent in the next round – is going to come out of that district with all those um, – with a lot of those schools that they've been beating up in that former district that they, that they were in, you know, the A-plus academies and that stuff. Um, yeah. yeah. Of course, they would, and, get the, and, they would get the district champ out of that, that group. But. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the district champ out of that, that, out of that district might not be insurmountable. You know, mm -hmm. I, I don't know that there's a ranked team in that in – that, bunch I, I haven't cross-checked it i just looked up the alignments as we were jumping into this question but i think that they uh you know they get in and i i assume they would get in as, as fourth place team you never know how that's going to shake out right yeah i'd have to look closer to see if they if there's a path to to them getting a three seed or something but i, and think that's I really the thing know is because like Mejia, if they beat Grandview, they share the district title and if mm -hmm. they lose they still at least get second place because they beat may pearl Okay. And May Pearl then would be in third place uh, because they lost, they would have lost to both Mejia and Grandview. And so uh, whoever wins out of West and Whitney is going to be the fourth place team. Okay. So there you go. So they're going to play yeah. a first place. Yeah. Okay. Thanks, DJ. Uh, you know, we got someone, I think our viewers should realize we're talking about six classifications, <laughs> two divisions in each classification. Now, we don't have a team in every division of every classification, but no, we got but, a lot of different But we're pretty close. There. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but we got a lot of different districts out there and a lot of different scenarios to break down. And I think if you put a microscope on each one, you can kind of figure out how it's going to go. But uh, anyway, but that's good analysis on that on that district race, DJ. Yeah, so uh, I feel like without having seen these teams play, you guys have, but, um, you know, it feels to me like West would want to keep this game a slugfest and Whitney would want to make it a shootout. You know what I mean? Because mm -hmm. of kind of what DJ said, obviously West has the defense and then, you know, Whitney has still, even without Jonte Johnson has guys like Mason Seeley, who's been there and, you know, can sling it around. And so, I mean, that, that would, to me, you know, if you're just sort of dumbing it all down, you know, Whitney wants to score points. West wants to just grind it out. You know, I mean, win seven to six, like I right. think they have already, with the, like they did with Mahia, right? Yeah. Uh, although David Woodard probably wouldn't mind having a little more of a comfortable, lead. <laughs> <laughs> maybe fourteen to six or something. <laughs> so, um, yeah. So we are to the end of the regular season, if you can believe it or not. Week eleven. Um, it's so always fun to tell people that, like, hey, how are things going? Pretty good. Are you busy? Yeah, it's actually the last week of the regular season in high school yeah, football. And they yeah. go, oh my gosh, is it really? Yeah, <laughs> it does. It it sort of uh, flies by, especially if you're not yeah. like in, in it like we are. Mm -hmm. uh, 
so obviously there is a lot more to come and a lot more memories for us to take with us from the 2024 high school football season. But as we sit here today on uh, November the 6th, um, what are you going to remember most about the 2024 season? Like in terms of what you know today? I'll let DJ go first because I have kind of a long answer to this. Oh, question. boy. Yeah. Um, what, do you, what do you think, DJ? I don't think I've told a lot of people outside of our media circles that I am um, going to be leaving the trip at the end of football season. So this year has definitely been a little bit... Um, like me trying to take it in as much as possible. Mm. Um, so, I mean, obviously it's, uh, it's definitely a little strange to see, you know, teams that hadn't been doing so well, you know, doing really well now, this year. And then teams that were doing really well in previous years, not doing so well this year. It's been a weird year. <laughs> it's been, it's been kind mm -hmm. of a flip flop. Uh, I mean, Obviously, Robinson really surprised us. It's been really fun to cover this team and Coach Lancaster. They've been really kind to us, especially to me, anytime I go out there. Um, and I mean, a university as well. Um, it, it's been a little bit of an up and down season with them, a little bit disappointing not to see them be as put together as we kind of expected them to be. But they're still a really good team and they still have a really good chance. So I'm excited to see what they can do in the playoffs and hopefully getting you know past that first round and that I get to cover them for a little bit longer um as well you know some of these other teams um that I I've, I've really enjoyed and and I've you know getting to know those coaches and those kids and um uh, in those communities and so um I feel like just overall just trying to not take this season for granted is the mm. thing that is uh i'm trying to remember the most. nice nice well, you got seven more weeks of it so yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah you still have time to get nostalgic in seven weeks but uh yeah that no that's a good that's a great mm -hmm. great answer honestly uh and robinson to me is is one of the things certainly that i think is one of the stories of the season chad what do you uh, say so out of the 11 weeks and 10 weeks so far, five of them I've covered either Mart or La Vega, right? Wow. And, okay. And um, covered Kevin Hoffman and Don, what's that? We have covered all of that 12 for Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Why not? Um, <laughs> and, you know, I, Kevin Hoffman and Don Hyde are, are friends, and I think they, I don't know if they got together and decided on this, but either, neither one of them have been the least bit satisfied at any point of this season. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, like I, I, uh, I interviewed Kevin Hoffman the first gap they lost to Whitney, and he was like, "I tried to tell you we're not any good, you know, right. they are ranked number one, right?" right. Uh, and um, it it just it speaks to like kind of the driving nature, but it also reminds me. Do you guys remember uh, the rat poison rant, Nick Saban's rat poison rant? I don't think so. Here, I'll play. I'll play it for you. I'll play oh it for you. Oh my gosh, we're gonna. Uh, this will be what? terrible audio on the. Audio. Are we gonna get copyrighted I'm for this? Them. No, I mean, it's listen? not. It's just a YouTube video. Okay. I'm asking them. Are you gonna listen to me? Are you gonna listen to these guys? Wait, Wait a minute. Ah, you guys. I had it all queued up. Y'all screwed it up. All right, so <laughs> I'm asking them. Are you gonna listen to me? Are you gonna listen to the? Right. Okay. So anyway, essentially, Nick Saban was asked a question about a positive question about how his team played. And he was like, look, you guys are telling these guys how good they are the time, all the time. And it's like poison. It's like rat poison, you know? And he was, he was, he was, he was like, are you guys going to listen to me? Or are you going to listen to all these people telling you how great mm -hmm. they are? Right. The funny thing about that rat poison rant is, and you can look it up on YouTube. I encourage all the viewers to go watch it. The funny thing is, that was after a win over AM, and I covered that game for the sports exchange when I used to work for them. And I was standing right next to the guy who asked the question about how great Alabama was, and then he and then he sparked the rat poison rant. So that's like one of my claims to fame, even though you guys haven't heard of it. So whatever. <laughs> but so that that's that's the one thing, you know, like the rat poison inspiration of Don Hyde and Kevin Hoffman and, and keeping their teams going. The other thing is uh 
also La Vega, Javari Thornton, the touchdown catch that wasn't. Mm. Uh, he 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 mosses the guy, and the ball pops up in the air, and he grabs it and catches it as he's falling down in the end zone. And I think they got a penalty for like an illegal man downfield or something on that play. Or actually, no, somebody lined up in just the wrong spot, so they got a procedure penalty. But um, yeah, that that's my that's my long answer to that question. Uh, I, you know, interesting stuff on both of your accounts. Uh, I I like the the Robinson one just because uh, they they certainly were a team. I think that I don't want to say they didn't they came out of nowhere because they did make the playoffs the year before. But uh, but to a certain extent, I mean, I, I know I did not expect this kind of a season out of the Rockets. Um, on the flip side, and I think DJ hit on this some too. Uh, there are some teams that we're used to seeing win uh, that that haven't done that this year. You know, the Lorenas and Crawfords and China Springs of the world. It's been weird to see, uh, you know, this sort of cycle, um, you know, them go into this, you know, struggle this year. Um, and then no question for me, like the game of the year that I saw was Midway Temple. Um that night was just a lot of fun. Um, there were a lot of big plays in that game, and it really felt like Temple had it won. They were going to go in and I, you know, basically score an icing touchdown. Midway gets the goal line stand, and then goes on a ninety-eight yard drive to win the game. I mean, that was big time stuff for Joe Gillespie's team. And the Panthers, the Panthers are the story this year. Even though it, I don't know how long their playoff run is going to be because I think they might end up banging their head against. Pretty tough district in they, they certainly have been resilient. Uh one guy we haven't uh mentioned being out, but he hasn't played the last two games, and I have to check with Joe Gillespie on what his status is, is Chauncey King, who was their leading tackler, uh the Chilton kid. Um so I mean, you know, they've just had injury after injury after injury, and they just keep hanging on. They, you know, obliterated Brian last week. I mean, it was just you know, it was crazy. Eight rushing touchdowns. So, yeah. I mean, Midway, that's the thing about the Midway district. Thing. Yeah, no, the Midway animal is that they've got a lot of kids participating, and they hadn't been able to make those numbers work for them, right? But it seems like depth wise, they are now. Their quarterback comes down, and 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 Sunshine McNair, I guess you said. <laughs> right. I like Air McNair better. But uh, he comes in and uh, and and gets it done for him, and their leading tackler goes out, and they still play good defense, you know. Yeah. So Chad's stealing my my material here, but uh, <laughs> yeah. So I did learn last week in that Midway Brian game. After the game, I found out that Andrew McNair, their new quarterback, is nicknamed Sunshine, and they he does have sort of the flowing locks, you know. Uh, it clearly has to be. You know, remember the <laughs> Titans reference, uh, if you've seen that movie. Um, so my question to you is this. What would be a good, like, movie-related um, nickname for one of our Central Texas players? And then, um, even though we know it's a faux pas to give yourself a nickname, <laughs> uh, what would be a movie nickname, uh, or just a nickname, I guess, that you would wouldn't mind having yourself. Okay. So I didn't, I missed the movie theme of this, but one of my answers kind of fits in anyway. Okay. By the way, I wanted to give cash pull in a rap lyric nickname, but I couldn't think of anything that would be a uh, podcast, um, <laughs> podcast appropriate. Right. Uh, but um, all right. So here's one from the other night and this kid's a freshman. So he's going to be around a while for us to enjoy. Uh, Gatesville kicker, Leonardo Leon. Nicknamed Ninja Turtle. <laughs> See, that's cinema. I mean, that's... I don't know that that is. I don't know that, that is his nickname, but that's going to be his nickname the rest of high school as far as the Waco Trip <laughs> podcast. Leonardo Leon. Because mm -hmm. yeah, I like it. I like it. That's pretty good. Another one. I want another one. I have to throw out there, even though it's not movie related at all. Uh, I think I think a good name for Temple's Chant Mayo would be Ioli. Oh gosh. <laughs> Uh, this is going to devolve into some <laughs> dad jokes here. 
I'm not, I, I don't feel as clever as y'all. I keep thinking about, I'm trying to think of somebody we can call Smalls because I keep thinking about, you know, you're killing me, Smalls. Uh, yeah, that would be a good one. Um, shoot. I don't really know. <laughs> I want to call. DJ, have you ever had a nickname besides DJ? DJ? Uh, I mean. Any that you want to repeat? <laughs> I, I mean, like, I, not really, like, I mean, my, because, I mean, okay, the only people that call me this are my grandma, my, my, my maternal grandmother, and my uncle, it's on my mom's side of my, uh, the family, her younger brother, they call me Dayis, because okay. uh, in Spanish, my name is pronounced Dayan, mm -hmm. so, um, I, I don't know, ever since I was a little girl, they just call me Dayis, it's, Dayis. like, Yeah, I don't, but they still, uh, DJ just came from, you know, the D and the J in my name. Mm -hmm. Um, and it, it was like a combination of my cousin and my best friend who lived down the block for me. They kind of just like tripped up on my name one time and just called me DJ for short. And it kind of stuck. And then when I was going to school, nobody like would know how to pronounce my name when they saw it. So I was just like, just call me DJ. So I just DJ. Yeah. 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 So I I have actually had three nicknames in my life. Okay. Uh when I was in high school, a, a roundabout way, uh, I got the nickname Chainsaw from my older friends. It is around like it's a roundabout way. I don't want to go the whole story, but it kind of stuck and uh I think it probably kind of stuck because I have a little bit of an edge sometimes and sometimes I'm not, not the nicest person. So, yeah, I think chainsaw work there, you know, mm. uh, the other thing. Uh, well, when I was in college, uh, Conine, my friends at work just start, started calling me nine or the nine or niner, you know, mm -hmm. and then uh, <laughs> my some of my nieces and nephews call me grandma. <laughs> Well, I showed up. I showed up one time, like on a ski trip, wearing a pea coat, like a black pea coat. And and my nephew Bo, he was like, "Why are you wearing a lady's coat?" And I said, "It's not a lady's coat. It, it's a they wear this coat on like naval ships and war and everything." He said, "Whatever, Grandma." <laughs> <laughs> oh, I I thought of one. I okay. Heard. Uh, I want to call Colden Horn Lightning McQueen. All right. All, right, red, all right, and he's really fast. So yeah. I like it. I like it. I had him down too, but I had him not movie related. I had him as ice, as in ice colden. Nice, okay. nice. Uh, I I was just sitting here thinking because I hadn't really answered my own question in terms of the, the Central Texas player, uh, and the only thing I could come up with off the top of my head real fast was um, Ray Sean Smith, maybe Buzz Lightyear, Buzz for oh, the Hornets. Yeah. yeah, you know. So we're we're keeping it real Disney here. Uh <laughs> in terms of my own nickname, uh I I tried to actually give myself a nickname once in terms of um like where you where you actually name yourself. Uh I had many nicknames over the years and I'll mention a couple. Uh, no, <laughs> no. <laughs> not I'm not George Costanza. No. Uh As you know, I love the movie Three Amigos. And when I took Spanish in high school, I think I've told this story before. Mm. I looked it up and I was like, Miss Schmidt, I want my Spanish name to be El Guapo. <laughs> <And> so, <laughs> so, yes, I tried to be El Guapo, but I don't think it really caught on. It didn't uh, take. No, the ones that actually did catch on were uh, Bryce Aroni, uh, mm. Rainbow Bryce. Uh, that's a reference to a a doll back from the a 80s. cartoon character Rainbow Bright. Rainbow yeah. Bright, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, and then um, Bryce, Bryce, baby, uh, yes, that one. Uh, that was My favorite Bryce nickname is Purveyor of the Cherry Bomb. Yeah, there was a lot of cherry <laughs> puns as well, um, and at cherry least. Cola. Uh, at least one that I'm not even going to mention because it's just again not broadcast appropriate, and I didn't come <laughs> up with it. Uh, but it's, <laughs> so we're just going to leave it at that. Um, <laughs> DJ Week Eleven, you are headed to uh, Waco ISD Stadium. Stadium. Uh, uh, yep, 
Ellison versus University for the two and three spots in that uh, district. So we'll see if uh, the Trojans can turn it around, uh, you know, get a get the, that two spot behind Brenham. I think Brenham is is pretty tough. I think you know that's a that's a pretty tough team, but um, I I don't know. I still think University is sneaky. They're very talented, and uh, there's no question they could do some damage in the playoffs. Uh, Chad will be at West and Whitney. The West Whitney game. Yep. Yeah, we've talked about that one. Should be fun. Kind of um, like a bowl game, you know? It's like the Kalachi Bowl, or yep, the Kalachi. Yeah, sure. Why not the the Lake Bowl? I don't know. Mm -hmm. um, it is in Whitney, correct? It's in Whitney, yeah. Yeah, and I'll be Midway plays uh, its season finale on Thursday at home against Coppers Cove. So I got a Thursday game, and then. Why not turn around and do a Friday game? So, uh, La Vega, I'll see the Pirates against Lorena closing out uh, the regular season. Uh, so, yeah, should be fun. Um, and we'll see you guys at the games. Later.